Now, why do you think that is, Sheriff? Is that uh, well, clearly all the agencies are working together more hand in hand now? Post well, 9 I think 11, the, the, folks have begun to think that way. That's what I was going to lead up to. We, 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 it's just one thing we learned. We, we learned a lot of things, but one of the main things that we learned during the 9 1, post 9 1, 9 11 event was communication. Right, right. Uh, and, and, and you've seen on the news, and oh, the yeah. national news, that, 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 that the areas where they weren't sharing information. Right. Well, that has caused us to meet a lot more through the, 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 the Homeland Security program right. on the right. national level that, that, that feeds down to the locals through grants and whatever. But it's, it's, it's created committees mm -hmm. that you serve on with uh, different disciplines right. throughout the county. Not just law enforcement, but everything as far oh, yeah. as public safety is concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, that creates communication. Right. The fact that we meet all the police chiefs and, and, and the sheriff, and we meet the second Wednesday of each month, and the solicitor's office is also involved in is that. Is that right? So yeah. all the police chiefs meet with the and, sheriff? Yes. And, and the solicitor. Right, sure. We discuss issues that's going on. Well, that opens the door oh, for yeah. communication yes. and sharing of information. The DEU which has a grant that was funded this, through the solicitor's office. Mm -hmm. Now we have agents, deputies and officers from different law enforcement agencies working as one in a drug unit right. with the, the DEU. The drug enforcement unit. That, we meet on that. Mm -hmm. So everyone who has a representative from their agency Tremendous. on that DEU, we're meeting, we're talking, we're discussing things. And the best thing that that creates is communication. Right, right. And communication is what it's all about, okay. to work together in anything you do. Mm -hmm. Certainly law enforcement, I understand that. But it's got to be in the business community as well, mm -hmm. communication. And the folks that are in place right. through the various departments now mm -hmm. have either known each other or right. worked with each other oh, yeah, sure. at some point throughout their career to where we know them not only professionally, right. we know them personally. And that helps so much with the working conditions sure. and the information sharing and all. Of course, the big events that we have, the biker events and right. things of this nature, oh, yeah, a lot we just went up. through two debates, sure. uh, which I thought was just wonderful for this area. Absolutely. But we use the same system that we use in planning and organizing biker events. We right. use that with the debates where we were all there together. We were all in the same Oh, way. yeah. We were all sharing Very well handled with presidential candidates and uh, it went former off. presidents and it otherwise sitting there. Glitch. It really did, didn't it? You it must was, feel great about that. I do. And, and, and there's a lot of people to thank for and that. And it's tough to imagine. Oh, I know there are a lot of folks to, to thank for that, but it's tough to imagine that it would have been handled as seamlessly prior to 9-11, because oftentimes administration, administrations just weren't working together as much as they are now. Clearly and, and it would have worked one, well. One thing that that brought to us is the incident command system, mm -hmm. is, is what we call it, and that's the way we work major events. Right, right. We incorporate that now in everything that we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it, if you go by that system, mm -hmm. it makes you communicate. It, right. Or doesn't make it, it requires you. Requires you to, yeah. You know, it, yeah. It requires you to communicate. It requires you to do different things together. So um, things, are, things are going good. I tell you, I, I'm proud of Ulrich County. Yes. Uh, I love where we're at. Uh, I, I love the direction we're going in. Um, we're growing, and with that brings challenges. Right, right. And we got to think outside the box as leaders in law enforcement. Now, Sheriff, this, this building, 212,000 square feet, there's also this government side of the building. You all are involved in the security over there as well. Yeah, clearly. that's what I was, when I mentioned earlier about the, the, the rest alarms for the different agencies or wherever right. they take up money, obviously, Treasurer's Office, Code Enforcement, right. sure. R&E. Sure, Anytime, there's cameras there. There's Mark. cameras all over here as well. Sir. That's Very sir. important, yeah. And, and then we station people, deputies, that are assigned to the sheriff's office, have stationary points where they work. And then we do walkthroughs, and, and if we have a major event, we, we work security for all council meetings. Is that right? Good. Some Very important. 
some committee meetings if you're yeah. going to have a large number of people there. Right. You need some type of organization. And what my staff does is not just security. Right. But they're there to help, to guide, to, to people come up, oh, yeah. want to know where to go. Sure. What, you know, uh, what they can take in the meetings, what right. they can't. Right. Things of this nature. So, you know, we're not just standing there like some kind of armed security sure, guard no. making it uncomfortable for you. Handling security, you got to do it in a method. Oh, yeah, but emotions can flare on this side oh, of the room, as, as this side of the building. It's critical to have that good working environment, the good people, the skills. We've seen it. Sure, sure. We've seen it. And we don't want the security to be uncomfortable. Right. We want it to be reasonable. We want it to be thorough. But the manner in which you do it right, right. goes so far. Absolutely. And like I said earlier, I'm just very fortunate the staff that I have and how hard they work and how seriously they take their job. Do you all have a, you know, earlier in the week Robert Edge was with us on Tuesday and he highlighted there are three deputy coroners. Are there deputy sheriffs? Are there folks? I know Paul Butler is somebody you turn to oftentimes. He has helped get the word out. But is there such a thing as deputy sheriffs? Well, the, the, the deputies that work for me right. are all deputy sheriffs. Okay, okay. And uh, the, the, How many would there be? I mean, is there's, that, there's like 34. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Now, you know, and, and they not only work here at the courthouse, they're out serving the civil process. Sure, of course. Of course, during the tough e economical times right now, we're seeing an, an increase in, oh, no. in activities so from that. So foreclosures, you all have to deal in that. Yes, we do. Oh, they no. Also, we also serve um, uh, warrants, any out-of-county warrants. So right. there's warrants outstanding on someone in this county that's from another county, another state. They filter mm -hmm. through us. We work with the marshal service religiously right. Right. Uh, for fugitive warrants and things of this nature. Anytime we got mm -hmm. a fugitive from another area down here, the marshal, if the marshal service gets the information, they contact us. And, and, and we, we, we'll do some legwork, and then they, we'll usually work together. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've, uh, we've made two arrests in the past two weeks with the U.S. Postal Service. Is that right? Uh, with things occurring out of state, but the but the the person that was doing it was here. Uh, they've sure. come down, and, and through them and the marshal service, we, we we've been able to execute some fugitive arrests. I'm amazed that y'all are able to get as much done, and we've only hit the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more things going on within the sheriff's office. How do y'all do this with? It sounds like almost a limited staff. I mean, when you think about well, Jay Rubin Long and here, when we are still doing, getting out into the community is very... When, when court breaks down. Right, <clears throat> right. And family court goes on every day. Right, sure. But when circuit court breaks down, we have what they call chambers weeks. Mm -hmm. That's where the judges are in the chambers, but the court proceedings are not going on. The deputies that normally handle those procedures are out in the field. Okay. Serving more, right, serving sure. papers. Um, checking on sex offenders. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we have, I'm sorry, we're almost out of time. We haven't been able to highlight the sex offender registration and tracking, which is so critical, and a lot well, of folks want to know about it. Unfortunately, we are up to 610 people now. Is that right in the county? That are registered. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we, when I said when we bring our deputies out of the courtrooms and put out there, we get them, um, they, they go by, uh, our sergeant that, uh, that's in charge of that program will have a list of people that need to be checked to verify right. that right. they where they say they are. Oh, yeah. So we've got deputies doing that. Sometimes when the deputies leave court and are on the way home, they'll get a list right. to go by because that's a very serious issue with us. We take it extremely seriously to verify and to make sure that they're out there. Speaking of that, if a viewer is interested in finding out if there's a sex offender living in their neighborhood or within a mile or a couple miles of their home, what is the best way for someone to, to do that? Is it going online to the county's, to y'all's website? Yes. It, the easiest way to, to go is to go to oreecounty.org. Okay. Click on Department, Public Safety. Well, on the, 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 the website. Right. For the county government, you can go straight to the sex offender. Is that right? You right. Click straight on. But if you go to our website with the sheriff's office, and you'll see a, a icon up there, or block right. that right. uh, has sort sex That's offender so registration and tracking. Right. Click on that and follow the leads. You put your address in it. Sure. It'll give you every offender that lives within a one mile of that address. Oh yeah. So if you're not checking your home, if you want to check your Day, school, daycare center, daycare, school, church, playground, right, whatever, swimming pool in the summer. They give you all the offenders that live within one mile. You could go down also and put your information in at the bottom of the, the page. 
if you want to be notified if an offender moves within a mile of any of those addresses. Oh, yeah. And it'll Critical. come into our system. And if when we... When we um, email alerts. Email alerts. That is great. When we post that information, you'll be a not not notified by email immediately. That's tremendous. Sheriff, I'm embarrassed to say we've run out of time, but, wow. you know, as you think about it, in 30 years today, celebrating 30 years, what continues to drive you to want to remain in professional law enforcement to the degree you've been in it the last 30 years? You know, I, I just, like I said earlier, and, and not to be the something to death. I just really enjoy what I'm doing. I have a passion for law enforcement. I care about law enforcement. I care about this county. And, and, and I just love what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful that, that uh, the citizens have given me the opportunity right. to do this. Absolutely. And um, I want to continue. I feel like i still got more to offer. I'm not ready to hang up my hat yet. I love it. <laughs> Let's hope that's many years to come. And it shows, Sheriff. It shows you love what you do. Thank Stay you. tuned to more Carolina people with Horry County Sheriff Philip Thompson coming up next. If you've been a public servant for 30 years, wouldn't you want to sit here and talk about all the great things you've done and sit here and pat your back? Absolutely. What does Sheriff Philip Thompson do? He sits here and talks about others. He talks about his tremendous crew out at J. Reuben Long Detention Center, his tremendous crew here at the Government and Justice Center in downtown Conway. The folks are interfacing every day. When he talks about his typical day, it's dealing with his tremendous crew that's making a difference every day. For the folks not only here in the Government and Justice Center, not only out at J. Reuben Long, but also transporting prisoners throughout the county, updating the sex offender registration and tracking list, constantly making a difference for the citizens of Horry County. You know, we want to, you need to take the time to go online to HorryCounty.org, click on the Sheriff's Office. They've got a lot of tremendous frequently asked questions, but they've also got a link to SORT, to the Sex Offender Registration Tracking, where they've got email alerts, they've got tremendous safety tips for parents, tips for children, things you need to know to be able to communicate with your loved one. Take the time, go online, or pick up the phone, 843-915-5450. 30 years of professional law enforcement. Today's the day, but it's been a lifetime for Sheriff Philip Thompson. Philip, thanks so much for being Thank with you, us this Sheriff. morning. Thank you for watching.